such a great walking city, you have to get out there on your own and explore. There's art, there's history, there's culture, there's theater, and, and it's hard to get it all in in one time. My name is Joan Peglucia, and I am the group leader for Road Scholar. We developed this program to appeal to those participants that are interested in a program that incorporates the traditional Rhodes Scholar approach, which is an emphasis on learning and well-structured schedule. Plus, uh, it's a program that also has enough flexibility that allows for free time. We had such an experienced group leader that knew the city so well that she could really impart good advice. And she knows the city better than anybody that I've worked with so far in Boston. So our um, Freedom Foundation guide this morning that took us on a Freedom Trail walk of the North End, his character was Robert Newman. And Robert Newman was the sexton who was responsible for one of by land, two of by sea lanterns in the Old North Church. So he gave us a really good history lesson and stories about Paul Revere and the American Revolution and what led up to it and really brought the whole history lesson to life. We didn't have a public marketplace in early 1700s Boston. In, in England, there was a tradition. You would often have a marketplace with a meeting hall atop. And we had nothing like that. We were a city of pushcart vendors. Everything came off of a ship and went onto a wagon. Battle Hall uh, was sort of where we started two of our greatest American pastimes, voting and buying stuff. Today was really good because I was on Freedom Trail maybe in 1970, but it, was un, it wasn't escorted. The, the person today was number one. It was tremendous, okay? So much information. It made, it made it come alive. It's not what you would get yourself by walking along the trail. Tonight, we're going to the oldest ballpark in the country. Let's go Red Sox. Getting into Kenmore Square and uh, seeing a bottleneck of people just congested in uh, the, the entrance of the subway and then seeing this monsoon of rain, uh, it could have been a moment for panic, um, but I always think that those moments are also opportunities where you can really make an impact on, uh, on people in a positive way. So as soon as I saw the monsoon, <laughs> I ran to the nearest 7-Eleven, which is just a, a couple blocks down the street and I, I looked at the guy and I said I need all of your umbrellas. I purchased all of the umbrellas that I could and uh, went back and there was a wall of people staring at me with envy that I had so many umbrellas just in my, in my arms and they said how much do you want for those umbrellas and I said these are for my group. I gave them to them and I said, we gotta get, we gotta get you to Fenway Park as soon as possible. We gotta get you out of this metro stop. And so uh, I escorted everybody to the nearest gate. Matt took it upon himself to go above and beyond, ran out in the downpour to 7-Eleven, bought all the umbrellas he could find, <laughs> ran back to the subway and tried to find us in the throngs. The sprinkles turned out to be a thunderstorm, but I think once everyone got settled at the actual field, the uh, facilities and the baseball park has just such great history and it's such a wonderful old park. I think everyone enjoyed the game. It's a wonderful place to see a, a ball game. It's, uh, it's like a little jewel in the night. It's a beautiful park when you walk up the ramp and enter and see the lights and the green and the players out there. Uh, the team is disappointing this year, but the park is always a winner. <laughs> Welcome to Boston. I'm Richard Johnson. I'm curator of the Sports Museum in town. I'm here tonight to speak to you about Fenway Park, our beloved ballpark. Fenway simply endures as the place our parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents called home and which we cherish to this day. My simple inspiration behind doing the book, which you see here, Field of Our Fathers, was to simply create a book that I myself would want to buy if I was in a bookstore. I've followed the Red Sox my whole life, so I know a lot about the Red Sox. And he had 
Sure, things I didn't know about. He was very good, we enjoyed it. You couldn't help but learn something, and he did a great job. I find that when I'm in a room with the Rhodes Scholar participants, I'm in a room with a lot of people who are curious. They're travelers, and I'm a traveler, and I'm certainly an armchair historian, too. Yeah, it's fun, and certainly uh, I've been very happy to do it. The lectures were wonderful, and I think they enjoyed having structure as well as having free time to explore the way they wanted to. The flex time is a good idea. We liked, we liked having the free time. There are a lot of things, streets you can walk up and down, you can just sit somewhere and have a beer, or visit a museum if you have enough time. It's nice to have a certain amount of extra time on the way over to the uh, Kennedy Library. I think that was the best lecture on, on the trip, the one about the Cuban Missile Crisis. He was very good. Um, we both learned things that we just didn't know. Uh, his research on the Cuban Missile uh, Crisis, he's written the books on, on it. It was very, very interesting. I know he could have gone on longer, and I sort of wish he did. <laughs> My name is Sheldon Stern. I'm a historian by profession doctorate from Harvard, was historian at the JFK Library from 1977 to 2000, and during that time became the first person ever to hear the XCOM tapes from the Cuban Missile Crisis. I have now written three books about the XCOM meetings. It's an extraordinary fact that these verbatim tape recordings were made during the most extraordinary week really in our history. I was like what five years old when this happened so I like really didn't know that much about it. We went to the library, we got his book, we read the book. He really expanded on that and yeah I learned a lot. He answered questions and uh, I, it was very in-depth and then here he gave us a very good good idea of what we can see here and how they built it and how they came to it and, and about finding the picture of him shaking hands with Clinton when Clinton was in high school and came to a thing and how he was there when the person found the film that had this famous photograph. Every Rhodes Scholar participant has a story, every one of them. I was just speaking to somebody that was an interrogator in the Army, but his experience post-retirement was his school teacher. He got his teaching certificate, and that is a story that you hear all the time when you group lead Rhodes Scholar programs. It's such a vast resume of experience. Everybody has an experience, and it's always, that's one of the best parts of the job is just hearing about their lives.